This video is sponsored by NordVPN. I'm not gonna lie, the latest Snapdragon flagship chipset really is a level above what we've seen before and utilized to its fullest could be a total game changer. This is the awfully named Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Elite Gen 5. Hey guys, I'm Ryan Thomas, and mobile phone processors have kind of got a bit ridiculous, to be honest. Uh, and for the longest time, I mean, smartphones have been way faster and more capable than the desktops, even gaming computers that I grew up with. And with the likes of the iPhone, Galaxy Ultra, and OnePlus devices out there, you'd be forgiven for wondering where we actually go from here. Phones already feel fast enough, but there's more to do, and Qualcomm has a few tricks up its sleeve. One of the most convenient and handy inventions of the last few years is certainly a VPN, and that's where this video sponsor NordVPN comes in. Not only does this service help you browse anonymously, tunneling your network traffic through another region which helps secure your connection, but it's also just really handy for watching programs, movies and sports that you just wouldn't get in your home version of Netflix, for example. Or if like me, you're a diehard Premier League fanatic and you go on holiday, being able to log into your streaming services just as you normally would without a fuss is brilliant and NordVPN allows you to do that. It works on Mac, Windows, iOS, and our beloved Android, it's easy to install and get set up. If you go to nordvpn.com slash androidpolice, you'll get up to 77% off a two year plan and four months extra for free. So check that link out in the video description and a big thanks to NordVPN for sponsoring today's content. So the Snapdragon 8 Elite Gen 5 is a horrible name, but does replace the current Snapdragon 8 Elite. Gen 5 points towards this being the fifth generation Snapdragon 8 chip with the Elite prefix now becoming part of the product name's body. It's a mess and I feel like product naming schemes are way easier than these companies seem to make it out to be, but there you go. Anyway, the company is calling this the fastest mobile CPU in the world, which is a pretty bold claim, but given Qualcomm's track record, probably not that surprising either. So the 8 Elite Gen 5 is built on a three nanometer node. Similar to last year, we don't actually know which particular process, but Qualcomm is boasting a 20% year on year performance jump. That's crazy considering just how good the 8 Elite was from last year that powered the likes of the S25 Ultra, the OnePlus 13 and Xiaomi 15. They absolutely smoked the competition, really stood out as an absolute beast of a chip. So 20% on top of that feels huge. The 8 Elite Gen 5 now features two cores at 4.6 gigahertz. Yeah, that sounds ridiculous. 4.6 gigahertz in a mobile CPU. And then six other cores at 3.6 gigahertz, which already sounds fast enough. And put together, this is a level of clock speed that we really haven't seen much in a smartphone before. And should that translate to real world performance, we have an absolute beast on our hands. GPU, mostly responsible for those games that you get sucked into on mobile and never get any work done, sees a supposed boost here as well. Actually, Qualcomm is boasting a 23% increase in performance, but also a 20% decrease in power consumption, which is going to play a massive role in keeping this thing cool and simultaneously stopping it from completely draining your battery immediately. The GPU also receives an 18 megabyte dedicated cache to store quickly needed assets and reduce render latency. Now I'm not gonna sit here and pretend I know all the ins and outs are about rendering in particular, but it sounds like a more responsive gaming experience. And um, well, that can't really be a bad thing, can it? The company has actually provided expected benchmark ranges for various different test suites that we as reviewers tend to run on our phones anyway, just to give us a bit of perspective. And the numbers it gives are pretty promising. I mean, they definitely top the charts and given what we know about this chip's predecessor, I don't have any reason to severely doubt the numbers provided by Qualcomm, but of course they must be taken with a pinch of salt because it's directly from the manufacturer and we don't have real world figures yet. And the main reason I'd be skeptical is that smartphone makers need to ensure that they're properly utilizing this chip just to get the most out of it. And that means plenty of room for vapor chamber cooling inside the smartphone, a nice strong battery and that kind of thing. 
I, I wouldn't expect an S26 Edge, if it came with an uh, 8 Elite Gen 5, to be able to compete directly with an S26 Ultra or a OnePlus 15. The outgoing 8 Elite benchmark is very, very much based on what phone the chip is in. Not by crazy amounts, it must be said, but you do have to play towards uh, big chip strengths and that is important with a big one like this. Of course, no 2025 product release is really complete without an AI mention. And AI isn't just a footnote here, it's a considerable chunk of the chip, both in Qualcomm's marketing and actually the hardware capabilities that it's going for. It has a new hexagon NPU, which is apparently 37% faster than last year. So on-device AI is definitely a focus. And I guess that makes sense given Google's push for this with the Tensor G5 in the Pixel 10 series. You know, we got stuff like ProRes Zoom done locally producing crazy results without the need of an internet tether. This new Qualcomm NPU, I suspect, is trying to enable similar features. And speaking of camera features, one of the headline additions to this brand new chip is a new computational video pipeline, apparently addressing pretty much every aspect of the video stack, right the way from the autofocus to the exposure, the white balance, and of course the overall video quality. And Qualcomm has incorporated what it calls the Advanced Professional Video Codec, APV, which essentially should translate to near lossless video, like raw video, ProRes raw, maybe. Uh, each frame is encoded individually, so video shot with this should see a quite significant jump in quality, but probably not the sort of thing that regular camera app video is really gonna benefit from. You know, the standard whip out the camera and hit record don't think that's going to majorly change. But for professionals, this could be huge. And I'm a big fan of more camera tools, so APV is looking like a very promising addition. Of course, it'll be up to, again, device makers to truly get the most out of this, but it is for sure a good set of foundations. There's also a new modem, uh, Qualcomm's X85 5G setup that actually has already been announced earlier in the year, but is now present in this new chip. It can do 12 and a half gigabit per second down and 3.7 gigabit per second up using an AI powered traffic engine to sort of prioritize what it needs to. I'm not sure we'll ever need to hit those peak numbers, but I'm sure some mad scientist out there has a requirement for this kind of thing and good for them, I guess. We're expecting the obvious devices to launch with the 8 Elite Gen 5 this year and next year. You know, Galaxy S26 series, OnePlus 15, Honor Magic, whatever we're on now, Sony Xperia, Xiaomi, and so on. So I'm sure that we will actually get to put it through its paces, get actual benchmarks, and assess real-world performance relatively shortly. So make sure that you get subscribed for that. Much like we've seen from Google and Apple this year, AI is the spearhead of modern mobile processors, and Qualcomm is doing its best to make sure that it's not left behind in this artificial intelligence arms race. With the spec news, the camera boosts, and projected benchmarks, the Snapdragon 8 Elite 5, 8 Elite, the Snapdragon 8 Elite Gen 5, fix your name in Qualcomm, looks promising. I mean, everything is pointing towards the fastest mobile chip in the world, and that's before we even get to AI, which will for sure make a profound impact on our mobile experience. We'll have to see just how well this all translates to real world performance and user experience when the first devices start rolling into the Android police offices though. Guys, this video was particularly nerdy, techy, details, specs, benchmarks, whatever. I'll be shocked if many of you made it towards the end of this video, but if you did, let us know that you did in the comment section. And whilst you're down there, be sure to hit like if you enjoyed today's content and subscribe to never miss another upload on this channel. Thank you all so much for watching. I've been Ryan Thomas and I will catch you later. Cheers.